I, I want to get to Bob Owens with Pajamas Media. Yes. Interesting story here. Bob, thank you for being with us here on NRA News. It's great to be with you guys again. Hey, Bob. Thanks, man. Talking here, Bob, about ATF whistleblower Gunwalker officials being shielded. So let, let, let's get into the story a, a little bit about what's the latest, what's happening here. Uh. I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob, we will talk to you again. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the latest that I have, at least, yes, is uh, you know they they took the three guys who were most directly responsible uh, for the ATF involvement and recalled them back to D.C. They were originally erroneously credited as being given promotion. Right. Right. But uh, what it basically means is we want you here where we can keep an eye on you and bury you so far in the department you can't talk to anybody. And and, and stepping back, and for, for those who haven't been following this as closely as you, Bob, and as we have here, the latest development, and, and help me out here, guys, is is that these three gentlemen who were, were, were a big part of this case were suddenly brought back to Washington D.C. and and then we all thought were had, were given promotions, but the the you know Representative Ice and a bunch of other fired off about that, but the the ATF responded and said oh, no 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 these are what they call them, lateral moves. Right. Mm-hmm. So so uh, what do you what do you think's going on here? Well, I mean, basically what they did is you know they kept them at the same pay grade, same level level of responsibility, but what they did is they brought them back to D.C. where they where, and this is supposition, but it's logical, uh, where they could keep an eye on them. You know, they've already had uh, Ken Melson kind of go rogue on them, and they were probably quite worried that the same thing was going to happen again, that if he got turned up on these three gentlemen, that they would find a nice little way to leak what they knew to the, to the press and, and maybe try to cut a deal. And 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 look, reading just to further bring people to speed, the three gentlemen we're talking about, and reading from 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 your piece, Bob, the three supervisors have been given new management positions at the agency's headquarters in Washington. They are William McMahon, who was the ATF's deputy director of operations in the West, uh, William D. Newell, and David Voth, both field supervisors who oversaw the program out of the agency's Phoenix office. And 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 jumping back to Cameron, you were down there mm-hmm. uh, on Capitol Hill. The latest round of hearings from with Representative Issa and the Oversight Committee, mm-hmm. and it was amazing to watch from our perspective, uh, Bob and, and Cameron. Probably even more astounding from your perspective to see him up on the stand. Yes. Uh, uh, whoa! What happened to this guy? I, I mean, the the, the, ter- the the thing that everyone said to to, to hit about him was somebody got to him. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. The the script seemed to flip. Yeah, and, and I've never seen a guy, and, and whether he knew or didn't, just to be, not even look like he was being evasive, Bob, but like he was just deer in the headlights all the way. So so what, what do you think happened here? Do you think someone got to him, or do you think they reined him in and brought him back here, and this is further reining him in by keeping him here in D.C.? Well, put it this way. His original job posting before he was brought back to D.C. is he was supposed to be the next ATF attache to Mexico. All the ATF had to do is say that they would continue that assignment. The reason for that is if he goes to Mexico, he's arrested for murder. Right. Or, or excuse me, accessory to murder, right. possibly. So, you know, you know, given the option of coming back to D.C. or possibly Mexican prison, hmm. I don't think, you know, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer. Now, now we we spoke last week, uh, Cameron and Bob. We we spoke last week with uh, uh, Senator Cornyn about this, mm-hmm. who was pretty fired up, and 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 he's. I don't think he was buying the the lateral move stuff. No, and yeah. he was he was also talking about a, a possible Texas connection, in, right? In, in, into this whole story. So you have, uh, you know, you you got the Arizona starts it. Then we hear stories about Florida. Senator Cornyn's c- concerned about Texas. I, I mean, where does it all end, Bob? Uh. Idaho, maybe? <laughs> um, I'm thinking a little bit closer to the coast. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking, we have Fast and Furious run out of Arizona. Right. You've got Operation Castaway running out, run out of the Tampa field office. Yes. Uh, there is evidence of two more operations, 
possibly run out of the Dallas and the Houston field operations areas. Uh, the only question I have is, was there anything going on in the uh, Louisiana, New Orleans field office? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the offices in between. I mean, we've got the rest of the southern border covered. You know, what else is going on? I really don't think that there'd be much coming in out of California simply because, uh, you know, think the borders are pretty tightly controlled there. But on the rest of the border states... You know, it's, it's it's wide open and it's fair game. And you know, the probability is that Fast and Furious was not alone. You know, the, the administration and the mainstream media would really love to portray this thing as just a one-off. Mm-hmm. And I'm not buying that for a second. You, know, you talk about the mainstream media, and yes, I know we, we all know that the mainstream media is going to cover for this administration, and they're going to cover for the mistakes made. But... Bob, why is it on you to, to to uncover this? Why is it on us to report this? You know, you have a, a Cheryl Atkinson, you have a, the New York, the L.A. Times doing some stories, but why is it on, you know, why is it on bloggers? Why isn't it on, the, you know, the New York Times is so busy writing op-eds about how the military, you know, that they shouldn't be called heroes and it's a, a cult of worship of the uniform. You know, where, where's the New York Times and all this? And not writing, you know, hit pieces when, when the administration asks... Uh, Ask them to do a hit piece on ISA, which has been, you know, mm, disproven. Yeah. You know, by thir- they had a thirteen-point email saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, they're so easy to do. You know, a hit piece against a, a chairman ISA, but why don't they go with as much fervor and, and help you do your job? You're, you're kidding, right? <laughs> um, it's really very simple. Journalism has never been unbiased. Mm-hmm. You know, you can look back at the Spanish-American War in Hearst, William Randolph Hearst, and, you know, the advent of the term yellow journalism. They pretty much talked the country into war. And that same sort of yellow journalism has never left New York. Mm -hmm. It never left D.C. And it has continued to be what it's going to be, the news media comes at things from a certain political slant that is most closely aligned at this point with the left wing of the Democratic Party, and they are promoting what they view as a common cause. And and the, the sad thing is, is they don't even view themselves as hot, having a bias. Right. They see themselves as reporting the truth, and it's just because that's how skewed the review of the world is. What got you so interested in this story to begin with, Bob? Uh... I really, really hate it when uh, bad things happen to good people. Uh, I was previously running down another story uh, a little bit closer to my home of a convicted felon here in North Carolina who has acquired three different gun companies while the ATF in North Carolina has turned a blind eye to it. Hmm. you know, I have pictures of this guy holding firearms and could get no movement out of these guys, only to find out later he was a criminal informant for him. Oh, wow. Uh, for a, a different branch of the government other than the ATF, but mm-hmm. they could not act at that time um, because he was you know, working for other branches. The thing is, I kind of blew his cover when I announced on my blog that, oh, by the way, Lee Franklin Booth is a criminal informant. Right. And so uh, he doesn't work for anybody anymore. And it was interesting that he was rated today by U.S. Marshals uh, for some of the other fun things he's done. And uh, apparently there may be gun parts that he is in possession of. And so I hope the ATF takes another look at this guy. Right. Um, but, you know, a- ATF doing wrong has been a real pattern lately. And, you know, I don't know that it has ever stopped being a real pattern. And Fast and Furious was just one hook off of a a long series of problems and stories that I've run across with the ATF. And it just turns out to be uh, worse than Watergate and Iran-Contra combined. 
Wow. And, and, and that's where I want to go next with this, uh, with Bob and Cameron. We're talking with Bob Owens of Pajamas Media here about the, you know, the ATF and, and Operation Fast and Furious and Gunrunner. Where does this go? How far? And Cameron, you mentioned earlier about this, and it made a good point where this started with us as a Second Amendment story, but it's going way beyond that. As right. you mentioned, Bob, this is a Watergate. This is a cover-up. This is, this is who knew what, when did they know it, how far up in the government does it go? Forget about ATF. Does it go to, to, to justice? Does it go to the White House? And that's where this story has just gone way beyond. Bob, you even mentioned, well, were there other things happening with other agencies and other places? So, Bob, how far? I mean, speculate a little more. How far do you think this thing's going to go, and, and how, how do you think it'll stick with the people it goes to? Eric Holder is toast. There is no way that he gets out of this. I'm, uh, that's a strong statement, Bob. You're saying there's no way Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, gets out of this. I, I don't see any way that it is possible. There wow. is no way this operation took place. Wow without Eric Holder being heavily involved in this from the get-go. Um, and while there has been no indication anybody is running the other angle down, I don't see how it is possible that uh, Director or, excuse me, Secretary of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, was not intimately involved. Right. The U.S. Attorney General or excuse me, the U.S. attorney who was running this investigation, Burke, was her uh, chief of staff when she was governor of Arizona. Right. Now, she is also the former attorney general of Arizona. Border security is her current job. You cannot tell me that she has a confidant running an operation in her home state that still has a lot to do with her current job, and she knew nothing about it. I do not buy that. No rational person can. Wow. <laughs> so Napolo Tano is in it up to her eyeballs. Right. Holder is in it up to his, to his eyeballs. You still could not get a straight answer out of anybody in DOJ mm -hmm. if you try to pin them down on what he knew and when he knew it. Right. And right. considering you have two cabinet-level officials who had to be involved in this, we know for a fact that uh, National Security Council personnel were being briefed by Bill Newell directly, mm -hmm. even though they're saying it was just, you know, they were just friends. Yeah. Well, that sounds kind of weird in any context. <laughs> yeah. That was that famous email when, the, when they read it during the hearing. Right. Wow, they, there was a hushed silence yeah. over that room. Weird. Yeah. And, you know, and of course, the best stuff you're smart enough not to write down. That goes with <laughs> phone calls. Right. No, no matter what the scandal, you should know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I find it really hard to believe this does not point all the way to the top. Mm. Um, I would be very surprised if Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States, was not directly aware of this. And I would not be surprised at all if it was an idea of his. We are talking about a guy who, while he was a director of the Joyce Foundation, back before he you know, was even a famous politician before he was a senator who had worked gun control script, uh, schemes in the past uh, by trying to buy up law reviews to corrupt Second Amendment scholarship. So, yeah, this guy has been working on trying to crack the Second Amendment and destroy it his entire political life, even back when he was a community organizer. Why would he not take the grand authority of the presidency and try to use that to undermine the thing he fears and hates the most. I wow. so you, I mean this the stuff you say Bob is just is just so, you know, as many times as we've as we've discussed it in NRA news, you know, you you come at it at you know such an angle that it's just, you know, it's almost breathtaking. I mean, how, what can the average person who's listening or watching, I mean, you know, other than feel helpless and angry, you know, what can people do? What can you know? You're obviously very proactive as a blogger and an investigator and a journalist, but you know, someone out there is just saying this is ridiculous. I don't want this going on in my government. Well, you know, what what can the average citizen do about stuff like this, if anything? There are two choices. You either get actively involved and you start you know, knocking down the door or ringing the phone off the hook or blasting emails out to your congressmen and senators, and you demand accountability 
and you demand an independent prosecutor be appointed to investigate this. Or the other option is going to Washington with torches and pitchforks. Wow. There really isn't anything else at this point. Wow. Just just when I think, you know, you've seen and heard it all with this. It's like, wow, Bob, thank you so much, for man, for bringing a lot to the table today. Yeah, we appreciate sure. We really do appreciate the work you're doing on this. And, and as you said, Cameron, it should be you know, shame on the mainstream media no, for doing this. this. Shouldn't have, Bob Owens shouldn't have to do this. You know, yeah. Thankfully, he is, and thankfully, he does an amazing job and, and brings stories that you know, people aren't talking about. But it shouldn't be his job. It yeah. really shouldn't. It, it, it should be the job of the quote unquote mainstream media. I mean, I remember, you know, Bob was talking about the Iran Contra, Watergate, you know, making saying this is bigger than both. You know, I remember Iran Contra covered pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you like know? everywhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, the hearings were on every channel, and we were watching every every bit of it. Um, but uh, but yeah, Bob, thank you for the work you do. It, it's uh, it's amazing work, and, and we appreciate you coming on with us, and we appreciate you keep the public informed. Thank you, and you know, I'd just like to take a quick second to say I'm one of, of many good folks working this. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can make a difference, and I thank you guys for, for giving us a voice. Absolutely, sir. That's we what appreciate we're here for. what you're doing. That's Bob, Bob Owens with Pajamas Media. Thank you, Bob. Have a good night. Take care. Thanks, Bob.